Happy New Year, everybody. We just received New Year's Dharma message and blessing from Venerable Chan San, head Dharma master of One Buddhism, all the way from Korea. <laughs> they say, say hello and howdy to head Dharma master. <laughs> <laughs> His message is about practicing Dharma with belief and dedication. Our founding teacher said, practice without belief is like fertilizing a dead tree. Do we, we have children? Raise your hand, children. Oh, beautiful. Well, have you seen a dead tree? <laughs> what would happen if you water a dead tree every day? Yes. It would not come alive again. That's right. It'll just wet and it will not come, come alive again. Here, the message is when you have a genuinely believing mind, your tree of practice will come alive and grow. Our dear temple practitioner, Patty Daniel, recently wrote down some of her thoughts on a, a newsletter. She said, faith means believing in the process itself. She wrote, and the path eventually leads to enlightenment. The turtle doctrinal chart of One Buddhism outlines a gateway of faith and a gateway of practice. In my life, Patty said, practice has led me to faith. The practice of meditation and gratitude the practice of keeping a mindfulness journal, the guidance of Kyomunims, and the study of the scriptures have all led me to greater wisdom. Patty's reflection describes how her belief manifests in her practice. I have observed that her unshakable practice comes from faith developed along her journey and her unwavering faith has developed through her consistent practice. Our Dharma book defines belief in this way. Belief means faith, which is a motivating force that settles the mind. That settles the mind. When I think of faith, the first thing that comes to my mind is Master Dasan's four inseparable aspects of faith. Faith in truth, faith in Dharma, faith in community, and faith in one's teacher. It's faith in truth, faith in Dharma, faith in community, faith in one's true nature. Can anyone remember these four aspects I just said? <laughs> Raise your hand, who can remember? Okay, okay, go ahead, Lori, say. Faith in truth, faith in Dharma, faith in my true nature, and faith in my teacher. Very close. So anyone else try it one more time? <laughs> yes, Stella. One's true nature is very close. <laughs> Last one is started with a T. T. <laughs> yes, Henry. Uh, did, did I say true nature? Oh, oh, okay. Then it goes to, sorry, it gets to Stella. <laughs> a word. I thought I said uh, one's teacher. One's teacher. Teacher. Did I say teacher? Okay. Well, I think nobody will forget about this for now. <laughs> 
then what this, does this mean? One, faith in truth, becoming one with the truth by understanding and believing in it. Do you know what truth is? Henry, what is truth? Um, honestly, what is actually there instead of what is made up. Mm, I love your definition. In our temple, Il Wan Sang, one circle is used as a symbol of truth. It symbolizes universal law and our original true nature. The symbol illustrates the principles of cause and effect. And no beginning, no ending. I have faith in this truth. I will live within this truth. Two, faith in Dharma. We can become, we can become one with the Dharma through studying, contemplating, and practicing. Dharma guides us to realize truth, manifest wisdom and compassion in our lives. There are countless dharmas to learn. The specific dharmas in one Buddhism refer to the truth of Ilwan Sang, the threefold practice, the fourfold grace. So much numbers. <laughs> I believe in mathematics. <laughs> but also, I believe in the value of dharma. I will continue to learn, internalize, and embody dharma. Three, we become one with the community by believing in the power of a community. When we journey together, we can reach much faster the other shore and with a greater joy. Becoming one with the community means that we receive support from the community. And we give a support back to the community with a firm belief in the value of this Sangha, I will not separate myself from it. My practice becomes one with the community. Four, becoming one with your teacher. Do you have a teacher? Who has a teacher? Who has a teacher? Wow. What does it mean to have a teacher? My understanding is, to, is that a teacher is anyone who mentors you and guides you to realize and manifest truth. I can be your teacher, but I am also a student learning from you. Since I arrived in the U.S. in 1998, I have truly felt that each day is a class. I have so many teachers all around me, and the best teachers are you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tesan said that these four aspects of faith are inseparable and deeply support one another. Faith in truth, faith in dharma, faith in community, and faith in one's teacher. He said, those who are fully equipped with this full faith have a complete ownership of their practice. Today's New Year's message points out that along the journey of cultivating belief, our egoistic judgments can arise. Also known as foxy mind. <laughs> can you say foxy mind? It sounds fun. <laughs> this refers to the state of mind that is neither fully comprehending nor totally ignorant. Children, have you ever seen a foxy? You have any, a fox? Anyone sort of see really fox? How does it look like? <laughs> um, it looks 
Yeah, I think fox is a really beautiful animal. But it can be sneaky. <laughs> a fox can quickly grab a chicken when no one is looking. A clever fox. When we get stuck in a foxy mind, a calculating skepticism emerges. This is a serious obstacle. A foxy mind is like a weed that can choke all the vegetables that you want to grow. In this state, one is not able to resolve one's doubt, constantly judging and weighing the dharma, which one is better, the wisdom of one's teacher. Anyone experienced foxy mind in your life? You did? You have? <laughs> Well, here is an example of a Wong Gong's foxy mind. <laughs> when I was a student in college, I was blessed to have loving spiritual mentors. And there is one teacher I often visited during school breaks. During one of my visits, I was surprised to see that my teacher did not show up for morning meditation. And when she did, she frequently frequently dozed off. <laughs> this really bothered me, and I started comparing her to my classmates' mentors. I felt embarrassed and disappointed by my teacher. For a while, I did not want to see her or talk to her. Because of my foxy mind, I resisted her guidance and lost many opportunities to gain her wisdom. After some years passed, I realized nobody is perfect, <laughs> even my teacher. I thought about her special ability to embrace all kinds of human beings, which is a very rare gift. I recognize that she always looks out for me, and she has many other qualities I should model. Not only in this case, but in other places along my journey, my calculating and judging mind often resisted and rejected connecting my mind and heart to those of my teachers. Nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect. So I don't judge myself for my foxy mind. <laughs> no foxy mind for judging foxy mind. <laughs> foxy mind free zone. <laughs> then some of us may wonder, does this mean that I should not question my teachers? Actually, in Wan Buddhism, questioning is much encouraged. We love your questioning mind. But please note the difference between an inquiring mind and a foxy mind. When you inquire with an open mind and heart to learn Dharma, when you inquire to clarify your confusion, this allows you to cultivate your wisdom. Highly, highly recommended. <laughs> this is different from foxy mind, questioning from ego-driven thoughts. The opposite state of foxy mind is believing mind, believing mind. When we drop all our egoistic judgment, we can connect our minds and hearts <coughs> of our teachers. This is like a connecting our veins to their veins. This connection allows us to obtain infinite mind power, mind power, and realize the great enterprise the great enterprise is alleviating suffering and healing the world. 
In order to overcome the dangers of foxy mind, the head Dharma master encourages us to renew our beginner's mind. What is beginner's mind? You know what it is. You know what it is. There is nothing special about beginner's mind. If you don't have a foxy mind, you have a beginner's mind. <laughs> if you don't have a beginner's mind, you have a foxy mind. <laughs> Our teachers have pointed out that even advanced practitioners can fall victim to the dangerous state of foxy mind. In fact, the more knowledge, the more experience you have, the harder it is for you to get out of the foxy mind. Why? Why? Because our spiritual ego, our spiritual ego can be thicker and stronger than any type of ego. Therefore, renewing ourselves with a beginner's mind is essential for all of us, whether you are just studying out or whether you have been practicing for a long time. The new year is a perfect time to renew our beginner's mind. 2020 is going to be a special year as our temple celebrates its 15th anniversary. Hooray! Hooray! Yippee! <laughs> I feel so thrilled for this anniversary celebration. I feel clear vision for the new year. What is your vision? Do you have a perfect vision for 2020? To realize our visions, may we constantly drop our foxy mind thoughts and just practice with the beginner's mind. May you practice with the believing mind, believing in our true nature, believing in our practice community, believing in all the good intentions of our teachers and Dharma teachings. May our vision be 2020. 20, 20. <laughs> Happy 2020. I pray your new year unfolds in a healthy, enlightening, and a happy way. By the way, yesterday I was enjoying some pumpkin seeds and thought of this little poem. Pumpkin seeds. Several pumpkin seeds were planted. Several pumpkins were harvested. Several pumpkin seeds were selected for spring planting. Seeds became fruit. These seeds I planted a year ago brought new seed. I am eating them now with my nails and teeth. I am peeling the skin and chewing the flesh. Yum! The flavor of a raw pumpkin seed. The flavor of earthy energy. This year's pumpkin seeds look just like last year's pumpkin seed but they are not the same. This is Wang Gong. May look like, may just look like last year's Wang Gong. <laughs> <laughs> but she is not the same. I am a new pumpkin. <laughs> I am a new pumpkin seed. From now on, you can call me pumpkin. <laughs> we can call each other pumpkin. 
Why don't you say Happy New Year to the pumpkin next to you? <laughs> Happy New Year, pumpkin.